Greetings friends and friends of friends. Uh, I want to talk about one thing real quick. Uh, hopefully this is going to be a short one here, but I just finished cleaning up this Game Boy Advance SP and as I was playing with it and showing it off in one of my other videos, I noticed that the screen itself seems a little out of calibration. Uh, so I want to talk about calibrating your screen on your Game Boy Advance console here. Uh, so this in particular is relevant to any Game Boy Advance, uh, whether it's a Game Boy Advance, you know, classic, um, Game Boy Advance SP frontlit, Game Boy Advance SP backlit, or even if you are taking a Game Boy Advance classic and putting a backlit screen in it, you need to calibrate your screen. Um, and when I say need, I mean if you want to get the best video quality. It's probably going to work fine without calibrating, uh, but not always, you know, sometimes there's a little bit of wonkiness. Uh, in this case, for my Game Boy Advance SP, it just means the colors are a little bit more washed out than usual, which is especially noticeable with the front light. Um, a lot of backlight mod 40 pin in particular Game Boy Advance color, uh, excuse me, a lot of 40 pin backlight mods for Game Boy Advance consoles tend to be a little bit washed out or 32 pin you see a little bit of like uh, lines going across the screen uh, it, they're interlacing artifacts anyway for adjusting that in particular if you don't have one of these I highly recommend you get one this is uh, just a generic reproduction Chinese cartridge but I have it flashed with the AGS aging ROM from tcrf.net the cutting room floor uh, this is a ROM actually that was used internally by Nintendo for testing consoles. I'm not 100% sure, you know, everything that it does, but if you put it in a Game Boy Advance, boot it up, let it do its thing, it'll run through a few checks real quick, you know, testing the memory, testing the LCD, stuff like that. Uh, it only takes a few seconds. Of course, this is this console is working perfectly fine, which. It used to not, but I just pulled that out of my parts bin today and apparently it works now. Uh, and you can press start, it'll run through a battery of tests, displaying images on the screen, uh, running the speaker through its thing, so on and so forth. We can let this go indefinitely, I don't think it'll ever actually stop on its own. If you hold L and R during startup and turn it on, I, I mean I guess you don't have to start holding L and R till after that Game Boy logo, but you'll get this menu here and you can go down to, well, not this one because the buttons on this one suck. We're going to switch over to this console here. The uh, buttons on that other console are in desperate need of a cleaning there. But anyway, go down to the second option, test program, and if you select LCD unit checker, it'll display this test pattern on your screen. And I don't know how well this is coming out on camera. Uh, it's really evident in uh, in person here. If you look at the console, uh, it's basically just flickering. It shouldn't do that. Uh, but this ROM in particular makes it really easy to adjust for that. On a uh, Game Boy Advance, what you do, boot it up, put some batteries in it, and then there's actually a hole in Shell's original and reproductions right here where you can stick a uh, Phillips screwdriver. Uh, this is the wrong size, of course, but just for a demonstration, you can stick it in there and adjust the little potentiometer. And if you have batteries in there and if you have it running, you can actually you know, keep an eye on things while it's going. Uh, Game Boy Advance consoles are, or excuse me, Game Boy Advance SP consoles in particular are a little bit more difficult because if we pop the battery compartment off here, helps if you take the screw all the way out, and pop the battery out, you'll notice the potentiometer is right underneath the battery. Now how are you supposed to, you know, adjust that if the battery's in the way? Well, apparently what you're supposed to do is boot it up, check it out, shut it off, take the battery out, make a small adjustment, put the battery back in, boot it up, adjust it. I, I ain't about that life. That takes absolutely forever. So what I have here, it's just a small lithium polymer cell uh, with a TP4056 based charge module and a couple leads coming off it. 
I'm going to, this yellow one is the ground, that is the top one, or the one towards the back of the console. I'm going to hook that ground up, and then I'm going to take my positive voltage and hook that into the other lead here. That way I can flip this over and boot it up off an external battery. I'm holding L and R so I can go down to test program, LCD unit checker, and now I'm going to take my Phillips screwdriver, actually, I'm going to use this one. This one has a better size bit for this. And I apologize if I'm going to do this slightly off camera, but I'm just holding the wires off with my middle finger and I'm going to stick my screwdriver in there and just kind of tweak it until the screen stops flickering. And that looks good to me. So I had to turn it about a quarter turn clockwise and uh, uh, maybe a little bit more. A little too far. Okay, there we go. So now you can cycle through the other test patterns and I mean, quite frankly, it doesn't look that different. It already looked pretty good. Uh, I'm going to keep playing with it, but that's how you adjust the uh, LCD after you replace it. You have to do this any single time you switch LCDs. So if you have Game Boy Advance console, you know, it's not backlit or anything. You drop it, you crack the screen, you pop a new one in. Even though this is OEM, not backlit, you still have to adjust it because otherwise your color is going to be off or you'll see a little bit of flicker here and there so on and so forth, uh, but this AGS aging ROM makes it much easier to do. Uh, otherwise you just have to boot up a game and keep playing with it till it looks right to you. And that's all I got for today, thanks for watching.